All-new Dr. Phil exclusive. The Here Comes Honey Boo Boo scandal continues. It ticks me off that she would take a nine-year-old around a guy that molested her daughter ten years ago. Uncle Poodle responds to Mama June's interview. June is lying. She's been lying from the get-go. She's told everybody, oh, we haven't had sex. And yes, they have. When they came back, they actually talked about it in front of Alana. The controversy. You've seen it with your own eyes. Alana curled up in bed with Mark. And Jim, yes. They were both in the bed. So you can pass a polygraph. You swear that that's the truth. Yes. Would you take one? Plus, police say he was starved, tortured, and locked in a closet. You can't explain how any of this happened. I never even saw that. What did the stepmom know? You never noticed the bumps, bruises, bones sticking out through the skin. I didn't realize he was like that. I've been in your home. How do you have a child in that condition and not notice it? I'm not the only one. You're the only one that was mothering him. I can't say that I was really doing that. I agree. The exclusive interview. Did you let that little boy down? I think there's a lot of people that let him down. Are you one of them? There was a story I did last year that has stuck with me because it was so troubling and tragic. A little boy just five years old was rescued seemingly just days away from death. According to police, he weighed just 29 pounds and had been starved, tortured, abused, and locked in a tiny closet under the stairs. His very own father and stepmother were arrested and charged with the alleged crimes. A little boy starved and locked under the stairs. Tonight, five-year-old Jordan is at Children's Memorial recovering after police say he nearly died because he was being starved. Bradley and Tammy Blymeyer were arrested and Tammy bonded out of jail. They were charged after deputy constables realized Jordan had been locked in a small 4x4 four four room under the staircase. This is something out of a third world country. He was worried a soiled diaper when cops found him Friday at a motel. Cops found out about this horror because the boy's courageous 16-year-old stepbrother had enough and got into a fight with his stepfather over the alleged abuse of this little boy. With cops on the way, the stepmother took the boy and fled her home, allegedly to hide him from cops. Investigators say Tammy has six other children, a one-year-old who is now in foster care. Her five, seven, 13, 14, and 16-year-olds are headed to a shelter. Tammy is pregnant with her seventh child. Jordan Blindmeyer, meanwhile, is living with relatives, and his biological mother is allowed to visit him. Today, for the very first time, his stepmother, Tammy Blymeyer, is speaking out exclusively about what she says really happened behind the closed doors of the house that police say was Little Jordan's prison. When the story broke six months ago, I traveled to Spring, Texas, and sat down with Jordan's biological mother, Wendy, who had reunited with her son just days after he had been rescued. Take a look. When this child was taken to the hospital, he weighed 29 pounds. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to cry so bad. But I knew I had to be strong for him. What is this black thing on his right shoulder? That is a taser mark. The police report says that there were bones sticking out and vertebrae showing through the skin, bleeding from the back, skin coming off of the back. Oh, yeah. It's something no child should ever, ever have to endure. What do you think when you look at this? I think that those people are monsters. I don't understand how they could have done that to my sweet baby. What was the first thing your son said to you when you saw him? Mommy, it's never felt better for me to ever hear those words. What did you say to him when you first saw him? I told him that I missed him so much. And that I promised that I would never, never be away from him again. Just so I'm clear, where was this closet in the house to your understanding? Underneath the stairs. This is how they were able to hide him. And it was just a small little cubby hole. But if you put stuff in front of it, you can't even tell that there's a door there. The children called it the Harry Potter room. They told the other children in the house that if they went down there and tried to help him, that they would get hurt. Do you feel like you failed him? I did. I felt like I should have gotten a gun and kicked that door in. I could truly feel that something was wrong. 
They completely shut me off from his life. That's a bond that should never have been broken. What was the explanation? I mean, what did his father say? He had no reason for it other than what I really believe is spite. So the allegations are true. Who's the ringleader? Honestly, they're, they're both at fault. Tammy could have put her foot down. She could have stopped this. She chose not to. How do you feel about the fact that this woman's out walking around free right now? That woman should never have been allowed to get out on a $2,000 bond for what she did to my child. At that time, I wanted to talk to Tammy to find out what on earth she could say that would explain this little boy's condition. Her attorneys let me into her house and even let me inspect the closet where police say Jordan was held captive. But they would not allow Tammy to speak to me. Well, today, just six months later, Jordan's stepmother Tammy is here breaking her silence. You may notice that we have no audience today because of the sensitive nature of this story. Now, Tammy's attorneys have asked to be present during the interview. They are here in the studio along with Tammy's victim's advocate. We're here discussing a story that I got involved in uh, many, many months ago uh, concerning your stepson. And I've actually been in your home but I've not talked to you. Now, you were then and are now currently married to a man by the name of Bradley, correct? Yes. How long was it before you you got married? About a a little over a month. At the time you married him, how many children did you have? Five. And he had? One. Just the one. Did you get the impression that he was a loving father? Was he affectionate? Did he touch him, hold him? He, he wasn't really an affectionate person, but he, di- he did genuinely seem to love him a lot. Did you ever see anything go on between Bradley and Jordan that caused you concern, that you went, whoa? I... He spanked him, and I don't spank my kids. He yelled at him, and I, I had a problem with that. He cusses a lot, and I don't like that type of language even spoken around me, much less in front of a kid or to a kid. So, yeah, we had had a lot of parenting conflicts. One of the things you've said is that you had an arrangement where he wouldn't parent your children and you wouldn't parent his. Right. That seems really bizarre to me. How how did that work in practice? We had a premarital agreement where we actually signed that part of it stipulated that I was responsible for my children, and he was responsible for his child. And define responsible. What does that mean? He would take care of him. He would provide for him any type of of parenting or or discipline for his child or my children. We were each responsible to take care of. Did you think that extended to not being responsible for protection? Well, I, I don't think I ever put that much thought into as far as protection. I mean, if somebody was try and take him or something, I would, I mean, I'd step in, if that's what you mean. What, what do you mean by, like, protection? Well, I mean, just that. If Bradley was doing something to Jordan, you thought crossing the line, hurting the child, putting him in harm's way, you don't think that premarital agreement that you signed would preclude you from protecting the child? I think if I saw anybody that was doing something to their child and I could intervene, I would. Was there a time in your relationship that you came to be afraid of your husband? Yes. How early on was that? Within a few months, I'd say. What made you afraid? In the beginning, he would have anger outbursts and hit things. He'd punch the truck in the garage. And and then there was a a few times where he started turning that on me. I wanted to take my son to go see his dad and he told me I couldn't. And he called me out to the car in the front of the house. And he opened up the console and pulled out a gun. And he was waving it around at my head. Did you call the police? No. Did you report this to anyone? No. Did you tell any family members or friends? Um, I, I don't. I may have. I don't remember. This is your allegation about what happened. He's not here to refute that. At that point, did you consider leaving him? I did. My ex actually told me 
this guy is crazy. I don't know how you're going to get yourself out of this. And I said, I don't either because I'm pregnant. I was living every day not knowing what was going to happen. You just kind of live day by day. Mm-hmm. Did he put his hands on you in the months to come? Did he hit you? Did he hurt you? Never hit me. He always choked me. Mm-hmm. And I guess I kind of justified it. He never hit me. You know, people asked. I could say that honestly. And there were, were other instances. Uh, one time I had called Wendy and told her I didn't like the way that, that Brad was disciplining Jordan because he was spanking him. I didn't believe in that. And he was yelling at him and stuff. And she actually also told me that I needed to mind my own business. She told me that she parented him the exact same way. It was not my child. It was not my concern. And I said, okay, I, you know, I don't have to be told by, by both parents, you know, butt out before I get the hint that, you know, this is none of my business. And when I did call her, she turned around and told his sister, who then told him. And when I got home from work that night, he grabbed me by my throat and threw me into the wall upstairs was holding me by my throat up off the ground and told me if I ever contacted her again, he would kill me after the baby was born and take the baby. So you feel like when you reached out to her... She got me in trouble. She ratted you out. It came back around to bite you. You know, I talked to Wendy, as you know. She says that she made attempt after attempt after attempt to see her child for two years that he refused and that you refused take a look at this you know where your child was inside that house Mm -hmm. i left notes on the door i went over there with police officers they wouldn't answer the door they wouldn't answer my phone calls none i messaged tammy on facebook begging her to just let me have some time with my child and what kind of response would you get she messaged me threatening to file restraining orders on me for threatening her children. I never threatened her children. All I asked was to see my own child. Did you hear the comment about the restraining order? She didn't make multiple attempts to try to see him. She did come over there one time. We weren't home. She did leave a note. She did talk to me after that. And I did tell her if she came over there and caused a scene in front of my children that I would do what I could to protect them, and then if that meant getting a restraining order, then I would do that. But I did not ever tell her she couldn't see Jordan. I told her that was between her and Brad, and that she needed to contact him directly. Did you ever see him withhold food from him? No. You you never saw that at all? No. Did you ever see him lock him in the closet? Coming up later in the show... Yesterday, I talked to Punny Boo Boo's Mama June. No one was more outraged by her interview than her own brother-in-law, Uncle Poodle. June is lying. And it kind of ticked me off that she would take a nine-year-old around a guy that molested her daughter 10 years ago. She's told everybody, oh, we haven't had sex. Yes, they have. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. A dentist drilled by his exes. These two used to hate each other, but now they've joined forces. Did she tell you that he had plans to tie you up and torture you? Yes. That's not true. Is he the bad guy? Next thing I know, he's kicking me out of the house again. Rick seems to be facing a firing squad of exes. Or the fall guy. Have you given him reason to be scared of you? I don't think so. I'm scared of them. Tomorrow, then on Thursday molested by her grandpa. When did this stop for you? When I was 15. For over 10 years. So I'd be damned if I'm going to stand out here and listen to your lies. That's Thursday. Better didn't say. Right. When you left, where were you going? I was not running from anybody. It came down to a choice. He was leaving or I was. I begged him to let me go and he gave me the keys and allowed me to leave with what I thought to be my children I did not even know Jordan was in the car I just wanted to get out of there with my kids you left behind who a 16 year old 14 year old and 13 year olds okay so you were leaving to get your young children out of harm's way you did not know Jordan was in the car right okay so you take the children and leave where did you go I went to a friend's house did you talk to the police later that night no 
because when I talked to Assistant Chief Mark Herman, he said she fled the scene. The deputies go inside the house, start looking for the five-year-old. A few minutes later, we're told uh, by witnesses on the scene that the stepmother, moments before our deputies arrived, had fled the location with the child. Why would she flee the scene? Yeah, that, that's a good question. It took us 26 hours to actually recover this kid. We were told lie after lie. We were on a wild goose chase, basically. There's a lot of inaccuracies in that. Okay, That's, straighten that out. I was at the doctor with my son, which is what I told the officer on the phone, who I called, and I told the officer exactly where I was. I proceeded to go into the appointment. He got checked out. There was no lie there. That's exactly where I was. Where were you arrested? I was at a hotel. And were you there with Bradley? Yes, I was. And this was the next day? Yes. When Jordan was found, there were bumps, there were bruises. He was severely underweight. He had marks on the front of his head. He had marks on the back of his head. He had bones sticking out, shoulder blades, uh, ribs, vertebrae showing through the skin. He had abrasions on the back. He had bleeding from the back. He had skin coming off of the back, and you can't explain how any of this happened. You have no idea how any of that happened. I never even saw that. I, di I didn't see any, I didn't see him looking like that. He had clothes on which covered everything up. I, Why was I he wearing a diaper when he was found? Because he wore diapers at night. I mean, my son wore pull-ups at night. It, that wasn't unusual. He had accidents. He was five. And so was my son. Five-year-olds wearing diapers is not common. Well, no, a diaper, no, I don't. I don't it's not common. No. I didn't agree with that at all. I mean, that's why my son wore pull-ups. It suggests that there could be some type of medical problem. There could be some type of emotional problem, you know. Well, the doctor a, would... One theory would be that the child is traumatized from being abused and kept in a closet. I mean, that's one theory that's being entertained. You've seen the pictures. Yes. Uh, are those disturbing pictures to you? At one point, uh, I read you saying in an interview that you could see bones on your back, too. I mean, you, you seem to be trivializing this. The, it was that picture that I, I was referring to in that statement. But when I saw the other pictures, those are the ones that, that got to me, the ones of his legs. As a parent, I cannot imagine... A child moving among my space in that kind of condition and not noticing it. How do you have a child in that condition in your home and not notice it? Coming up later in the show. You have said that with your own eyes have seen Alana curled up in bed with Mark. Next Thursday. I hate my grandpa. I hate what he did. You say he molested you in the bed with your grandmother. My grandmother doesn't want to admit that she knew. What do you want? You want, I'm sorry? I I'm want... sorry for what? I didn't see anything, but I'll be damned if I'm going to stand out here and listen to your lies. That's next Thursday. How do you have a child in that condition in your home and not notice it? Well, whatever happened to Jordan happened within a small time frame. My life was just so busy with the other kids. I mean, I had one, one baby I was still breastfeeding. I was pregnant at the time, and I had five of my own children that I was taking to doctor's appointments, you know, band, soccer, Brad was responsible for taking care of Jordan, and everywhere that he went, Jordan went too. But you were this child's stepmother. He was living in your home. Do you not look back and say, how did I miss this? I do all the time. What do you say to yourself about that? I ask myself the same questions. How do you miss something like that? I mean, you, you can't go back. You can't change it, but, you know, you, you think about everything that you do every day, and you think about 
all the chaos and everything going on and everybody in and out and, and who was responsible for feeding this child right did you know he wasn't feeding him i mean he's obviously malnourished he's obviously dehydrated we know now from the medical records that they had to start a refeeding process with him on a tube he could only process 300 calories at a time he was so malnourished and i didn't understand any of that because i did see him eat and he was eating when the police showed up i gave him food myself was there a taser in your home at some point yes do you believe that this child was ever tased no your wendy has said that your 16 year old said that he heard a noise like a taser and then he heard brad say you want it again then you better do what i tell you do you believe that to be true the instance didn't happen that way brad was threatening to tase me and jordan was trying to get him to stop but my son was upstairs and i do believe he heard a taser go off but jordan was actually trying to come to my defense did he ever use that weapon on you yes on what how many times on what occasion just one time it wasn't to hurt me it was just to show me what it felt like now clearly you're not a fan of brad at this point and you filed for divorce. Yes. Do you intend to get a divorce? Yes. Your allegation is that he he threatened you, he choked you on numerous occasions. He he did terrible things that caused you to be fearful. But you maintain that you never saw him put that child in that closet and close that door, barricade that door, keep him in there ever not even one time no. that this whole thing is completely fabricated jordan was never in that closet well that that's your position completely fabricated i don't know legitimately what was said well the police reports say that 16 year old and 14 year old say that he was kept in there there's a lot of inaccuracies well, in that. But you thing. said I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what's being said. I just I told you what's. I don't being know what said. the police reports. That's one version, and you're saying that never happened. I never saw that. Is there some version of it that has or hasn't been said that involves Jordan and this closet? I can't answer that. I'm not Brad. Well, I'm not asking you to answer as Brad. I'm asking you to answer as Tammy. I don't know what he did as far as that goes. It's your home. I never put him You're in that closet. You're the stepmother. Do you have any knowledge of him ever being in that closet? Closed captioning provided by... Do you have any knowledge of him ever being in that closet? No. Other than what people have told me. I'm talking about you personally. Per- you- no personal knowledge. Okay. I've been in your house, as I say, and despite the fact that the lawyers vehemently denied it, the house clearly had been staged. I I laugh because I've heard that that a lot, and um, I'm just that organized. Let's take a look at, at this, and then you can comment on it. So the two boys slept in here. Right. Uh-huh. Has this room been painted since the allegations no. have been made? Because no. it's still masked off. Not. And if not two little not. boys lived in here, it looks awfully pristine if two little boys lived in here. If it has, it has not. I, I don't know anything about it. You're saying nobody went in and staged that house for our cameras to walk through? No, I have pictures of the house from March 11th and it looks exactly like that. You know there was a paint rollers and pans and everything, yeah. brushes and everything just outside the back door. He started painting it in November or December, and I think it was just finished in February. The tape was still on there because he's lazy. That's why the paint rollers were in the backyard. When I, I look at this house that's so pristine, and 
you're telling me I, I was so overwhelmed I didn't notice this emaciated child walking through my house. It was just complete, utter chaos. This just got lost in the mix, and I'm looking at this house, and I'm going, really? Really? Just because your house is, is organized and clean doesn't have anything to do with the, the children in it or how they're taken care of. Where are your children now? The three of them are with my brother. Three of them are with another lady, and one of them is, I don't know. I don't know. I took good care of my kids. I always have. I've been a mother for 17 years. And was there a double standard here? You did one thing for your children, but not something for your stepchild? I did what I was allowed to do. I did what I could do. I guess typically when two parents come together and they get married, they blend their families together, they share responsibilities. I understand that, but that's not what happened in our case. But you know what every mother in America is thinking about this. Why didn't you get up in the middle of the night and put some food in his bed? Why didn't you call the police? Why did they have to come and find this child in this way instead of you making certain that they found the child, even if it was an anonymous phone call? Why didn't you do whatever it took? Why didn't you put the child's interest ahead of your own? That's what they want to know. I did everything that I could do for him. I didn't realize what was going on. Did it occur to you that you could make a phone call, just even from a pay phone, just anything, just to get somebody to come here? If you can't ward off, you say, I, I, I did everything I could do, but you could have called for help. You could have called 911. You could have reported the situation to CPS. I didn't realize he was like that. I didn't see him like that. Have you seen pictures of him with his clothes on? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's going to a store, he's going to McDonald's. Nobody else is, is noticing this either. I'm not the only one. You're the only one that was mothering him. I, I can't say that I was really doing that. I agree. Did you let that little boy down? I did everything I could for him. Everything that Brad would let me do, I did. Did you let that little boy down? I think there's a lot of people that let him down. Are you one of them? Yes. But I tried. I did everything that I could. We reached out to Bradley Blymeyer's attorney and invited him to participate in the show. Bradley is currently in jail and his attorney did not respond to our request for comment before our broadcast deadline. We've heard a lot of different stories about what happened to Jordan and it's now in the hands of the court system. We spoke to Jordan's mom, Wendy, a few days ago and she gave us an update on her son. Jordan is doing great. He's now in good health. He weighs 52 pounds and is in kindergarten where he's made lots of friends. Coming up next, the Here Comes Honey Boo Boo scandal continues. Uncle Poodle responds to Mama June's interview. June is lying. They had went upstairs to the fourth floor and literally had a sexual relationship up there. When they came back, they actually talked about it in front of Alana. Why do you think she's lying about this? She's afraid she's going to lose her kids. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, a dentist drilled by his exes. These two used to hate each other, but now they've joined forces. Did she tell you that he had plans to tie you up and torture you? Yes. That's not true. Is he the bad guy? Next thing I know, he's kicking me out of the house again. Rick seems to be facing a firing squad of exes. Or the fall guy. Have you given him reason to be scared of you? I don't think so. I'm scared of them. Tomorrow, then on Thursday molested by her grandpa. When did this stop for you? When I was 15. For over 10 years. So I'll be damned if I'm going to stand out here and listen to your life. That's Thursday. Closed captioning provided by... The Here Comes Honey Boo Boo scandal continues. Uncle Poodle responds to Mama June's interview. 
Yesterday, I talked to former child pageant star Honey Boo Boo's Mama June in a daytime exclusive interview. Our viewers have flooded my message boards and my Twitter and Facebook are blowing up with comments and skepticism about some of her answers regarding her relationship with an ex-boyfriend who was convicted of child molestation. But no one was more outraged by her interview than her own brother-in-law, Uncle Poodle. He came to the show to respond to Mama June in another exclusive interview. This is his first sit-down interview speaking out on the scandal that rocked his family. Here's what he had to say. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this because I consider myself to be a, a very passionate child advocate. What is the whole truth? The truth on the whole thing, June is lying. She came to me to go look at houses. It was on September 9th. I drove her up and she said she wanted to meet a friend. I said, okay. I took her to meet Mark. I did not know who Mark was in the beginning. Was this the first time she had seen him since he got out of prison? I think that was the first time she had seen him since he got out of prison. All right. Did you go in with her? Yes, sir. When we got there, we all got out because Punkin was with us with Alana. And we all sat down. We were talking, having a good time. Well, Alana, Mark, and June disappeared for a few minutes. That's where the other picture came in, where they're coming down the stairs. You took this picture, that's him holding hands. Yes, and they're laughing. Yes, I took that picture. She had Alana with her, and she had Pumpkin with her. So you took the three of them? Yes, sir. Okay, so she took her two children... Along with her, yes. ...to meet him. Yes. When did you find out who this guy was? Okay. When I got home, <clears throat> I started putting two to two together. I was like, okay, Mark, Mark... And I have a friend that works for the police force, and I had her run his name, and it popped back as a registered sex right. offender. And uh, this pulls up. Yes, that's what pulls up on Paul. It, exactly this page right here, uh -huh. right? This is in the state of Georgia, right? Yep. And it's registered sex offender. And um, what what did you think at that point? Kind of ticked me off that she would take a nine-year-old around a guy that molested her daughter ten years ago. You know, why would you take your child in front of him knowing he was convicted of molesting your child. And she's telling everybody, oh, we haven't seen each other. Oh, the photos are photoshopped. Oh, it's a big lie. You know, it, and it ticks me off about it. And she's saying these photos are photoshopped. Did you take this picture? No, but I know where it was taken at. Where was it taken? That would have been taken at the hotel that her and Mark stayed at. How do you know that? Because that's the headboard that was in the hotel room. How do you know that? Because I went in the hotel room with Jim. And how was he registered? I think he was registered under June's name because she paid for the hotel room. And how do you know she paid for his hotel room? Because we were all right there when she booked it. You have said that with your own eyes have seen Alana curled up in bed with Mark? And June, yes. They were both in the bed. Where? North Carolina. We went up there the fall that same week. We left on Friday the 12th and stayed Friday night, Saturday night, and came back Sunday. Okay, who went? It was me, June, Mark, Alana, and my husband, Alan. Did you know at that point that he was a registered sex offender? Yeah, I knew by then. But see, she'd already wanted to go up there, and I said, I'm not letting Alana go, no. That's why me and Alan went, to keep her safe. You didn't say anything to June. You didn't say, hey, what the hell are you doing taking your daughters around as predators? I mean, I watched him while we were there. He never got to, around Alana. Me, well, you me said and you I, saw him in bed together. That was the next morning when we got up. June was in the middle. And Alana was beside her, and Mark was behind June. So it was... It's kind of weird how they were sleeping in the bed. But you saw the three of them in the same bed? Yes. Was Alana asleep? Yes, sir. Was June asleep? Yes, sir. Was Mark asleep? Yes, sir. How'd you get in the room? All of us were in one room, two queen-size beds. So you were in the room, Alan was in the room, Mark was in the room, June was in the room, Alana was in the room. Yes, sir. You've seen it with your own eyes. It gets grosser than sleeping in the bed together. Well, let's get grosser. Let's get it out there. Coming up. That weekend we were together, they were all lovey-dovey in the back seat, holding hands and kissing each other. Is there any question as to why this show was canceled? We now return to the Here Comes Honey Boo Boo scandal. Uncle Poodle responds to Mama June. It gets grosser than sleeping in the bed together. Well, I mean, let's get it out there. That same weekend in North Carolina, she rented a second room on the fourth floor. They left Alana with me and Alan. They went to the fourth floor and had sex. When they came back, they actually talked about it in front of Alana. Uh -huh. It got graphic. And I'm like, why are you talking like that in front of a nine-year-old child? And what did she say? She didn't say nothing about it. She was like, huh? 
And what was Alana's reaction to this? She just goes with the flow. She'll laugh about it. Here's what Mama June said to me. She said, I have seen him two times. I have seen him twice. One time was by, you know, coincidence. Up in the mountains, I just coincidentally ran into him. No. The second time, I told him I was going to be house hunting, and I told him Pumpkin had some questions for him. Then she talked to him for about 15 minutes, and that was it. Haven't seen him before or since. No contact. That's it. No. The last, that weekend we were together, they acted like it. They were all lovey-dovey in the back seat, holding hands and kissing each other. She knows you know it. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Does she know you're here talking to me tonight? No. So I haven't seen June or talked to any of them. Since all this came out, she told me if I set put foot on her property, she would have me locked up. Because she knows if I was to spill the beans, it could get really ugly fast, which is already done. Your point is, you don't care what June does, but don't drag Alana, don't drag Pumpkin. Exactly. I don't care if you go out and have sex with 100 sex offenders. Do not drag my 9-year-old niece and my 14-year-old stepniece involved in this. Uh -huh. They're kids. Has she made Pumpkin lie for her? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. How so? When she told Pumpkin as hell that she hasn't seen Mark. Uh -huh. Knowing good and well, we went up there and picked Mark up. And they laid up at a hotel room together. At this point, is there any question as to why this show was canceled? I know why it was canceled. After she broke up with Sugar Bear, they told her, behave, don't be in the media, don't get in trouble. And she couldn't listen. When they seen the picture of her and Mark, that was the straw that brought the camels back. And they said, it's done. So how has this affected your relationship with your brother, Sugar Bear? I haven't talked to him since I went and told him that she was seeing Mark. What did you like, say when you told him? He was livid. He called her on the phone and asked her, was it a lie or was it true? And she flat out said, oh, it's a lie. And you can tell that blase, blase, that he's not welcome on the property. If he does, I'll lock him up. Yeah. There have been some things in the media that you were going to move to get custody of the girls. No. Uh, not true? No. If it came down to it and they took Alana away, I wouldn't want Alana to go in the system, that I would step in and take her until they could get this worked out. I never said I wanted the girls. Yeah. Do you talk to Anna much? Every now and then, Anna will text me. What's her relationship with her mother? Their relationship has been crazy from the beginning. She lived there. It was rare that they were in the same room talking. I mean, when Anna found out that she was seeing Mark and hanging out, she was devastated. But June saying that they talk all the time on the phone. No, they talk maybe every four or five days if I text. Why do you think she's lying about this when she knows you know the truth? She's afraid she's going to lose her kids. Why didn't CPS interview you? CPS did interview me. I told him the story. You told CPS that Mama June took the children around this registered sex offender that has just gotten out of prison. Yeah, I told them everything, showed them the pictures. And what did they say when you told them that? That they would do an internal investigation. Did you ever say that June was dating Mark? I don't know if it was dating Dr. Phil. I think it was just he was there at the right time. You know, and trying to rekindle what they had 10 years ago. More of a sexual relationship kind of thing. So you don't call it dating, but you're saying they were having sexual liaisons. Yes. So her saying, we don't have a relationship, is just not true. I know she's lying about it. She's told everybody, oh, we haven't had sex. Yes, they have. I mean, you can pass a polygraph. That you, you swear that that's the truth. Yes. Would you take one? captioning provided by want to know what's coming up on dr phil visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter you'll get weekly updates live strategies and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else plus on drphil.com you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows log on today we now return to dr phil's exclusive interview with uncle poodle you don't call it dating, but you're saying they were having sexual liaisons. Yes. So her saying, we don't have a relationship, is just not true. I know she's lying about it. I mean, you can pass a polygraph. To you You swear that that's the truth. Yes. Would you take one? In a damn heartbeat. All right. Fair enough. After Uncle Poodle agreed to a polygraph, he flew to Los Angeles to meet with former FBI special agent and polygraph examiner Jack Tremarco. 
I'm here to take my polygraph test to prove that I'm not a liar. I asked Lee Thompson, a.k.a. Uncle Poodle, did you ever see June, Mark, and Alana together in the same bed at that hotel? The results are conclusive. Lack of reaction was significant, and it was consistent. Lee Thompson has absolutely passed his polygraph test. We reached out to Mama June, and she vehemently denies Uncle Poodle's allegations. Please go to drphil.com. We would love to hear from you. I want to thank all of my guests for being here today. Go to drphil.com for more information, and we'll keep you updated on this story along with the others that we're working on. Thanks for watching.